Hello. How, How are, are you? you? Yeah, I'm good. Let's see. I'm not even looking at you. I'm looking at this. I know. I know. This is, is, it. This is it. This is it. Right here. Wow. This what? is this is where I'm um, I'm practicing tomorrow. They found me a piano, and I'm pretty sure that's the shop. Remedy. Oh yeah. Remedy. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it mean, go ahead. I have a couple of documents to show you, but this is the. This is so exciting. This is this, 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 am I, I going to be singing as well? Yeah. We'll <laughs> do oh, you've had it tuned. Yeah. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What's your first reaction to just playing right now? It's it's a light action, which I, I knew it would be because he was into that. It's 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 really odd. It's like being a massive football fan, football fan, and, and hanging out with like Messi's first football. <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. At his home in Brazil or um, Argentina, wherever he's from, and it's amazing. I just can't. I, it's, a, it's just it's surreal. The whole thing's very surreal. Because he, you got to understand that Gould for me was like literally my childhood hero. Most people were, you know, it was Batman or Superman or or um, who's the Baywatch guy? Uh, and Hasselhoff. Oh God! Yeah, you were like for a me, German with, with David Hasselhoff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I understand. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> it was really bad songs, <laughs> but for me it was Gould, and so I just to know that he's touched this. I know it's geeky. I know it's no, weird. No. I know it's a bit niche, but no, to no, me no. it's kind of I. I feel quite, I feel quite shaky. Well, I want to point out that last time we talked, you called, uh, you said you you were going to react like a like Tigger on crack. Tigger on crack. Do you yeah. feel that way? I do. It's bubbling up inside. It's so. I just. I keep thinking. I wonder which pieces he played on on this. And did he ever play live on this, or was it just a rehearsal? It was. A re it was his his rehearsal piano. A warm up. Yeah, yeah. He never he never recorded with it, and he never. Um, but he was very protective of it. I have, a, I have a document to show you a little bit later yeah. of him, like kind of insisting on certain repairs being made to it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Taking good care of it. Yeah. What's what, the serial number? Where are we? Um, I don't. I don't know where the serial number is. It's normally here. I don't know why it's not. That's strange. It was rebuilt in the '60s, okay. yeah. but it's almost a hundred years old. I like the finish too. I like that it's kind of matte. Yeah, it's beautiful, hey? Rather than glossy. Yeah. Why, well, like, uh, uh, you're not alone in, in being a pianist who reveres Glenn Gould. Why? Why is he such an enigma? Uh, um, that's such a huge question. It takes a certain kind of genius to stop. I mean, you have Genny Kissin, who's arguably the greatest living pianist. Mm -hmm. He won't play Bach because of Glenn Gould. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He feels Gould set the bar so high that there's just no point. And this is kissing. This is like, you know, yeah. <laughs> absolute. It's extraordinary. So I, he, he was such an iconoclast. He did things with a piano that no one had done before, from the quality of the sound to the, the sheer technique that he had, the speeds in the Goldberg variation, some of them. And he played repertoire that no one else played. Mm -hmm. um, and he was always insistent, and this is so cool. In an age where everything is about technical perfection since the advent of recordings and everything is at conservatories, it's all about competition playing and playing all the right notes, and that's the most important thing. Gould was like, no, you play something in a way that it's never been played before. You find something new to say, otherwise there's no point in playing it. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did. And and you've got to respect that. You've got to love that. I think in Canada, he's he's well known as a as a bit of a cultural icon, like an icon of our country. And I, I don't know if you walked by on the way in that 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 statue of him. Of course. Did, you, did you sit down? Lots of photos. Yeah. There. <laughs> I put my arm around him. You're making this documentary for the BBC. How is he regarded in the UK? Um. Look, we're not as cultured as you lot, so oh, yeah, anything right, right. classical music-wise is not even really regarded at all in the <laughs> UK, sadly, um, um, really sadly. But certainly amongst musicians, he's it's international, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, a genius like that, and to do what he did, and 
Um, I mean, musicians love him. They worship him. They don't always agree with him um, and his interpretations. And um, I really hope that Canada is a bit... In Argentina, I was playing there recently, and I would ask people if they knew Argerich and Barenboin. And, and the vast majority of them said, yes, of course, we love Argerich, we love Barenboin. I really hope that's the same here, that you ask people if they know Gould, and there's a certain amount of kind of national pride in that, mm-hmm. because... He was so in love with Canada. He was adamant that he would never want to live anywhere else. Why would he move? Mm-hmm. And this was his home. And he said something like, Canada has always been really good to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's such a, what a lovely thing to say, to, to feel like your home country has kind of taken you into their heart and protected you and looked after you. I think that's wonderful. Well, that being said, I mean, in making this documentary for the BBC, what are you hoping that your countrymen learn about Gould? Or what do they maybe learn about something larger than Gould through this? I think so. I mean, I, there, there are three kind of, core aspects that I'm looking at um, in this, his obsession with technology and the fact that he was so far ahead of his time. I mean, he this guy foresaw Spotify and iPods. Really? and Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, he saw a time where people would, in their own bedroom, be able to put together a piece of music, which, of course, is Garage Band. And it's, you know... That's and Finale some, and... and, yeah, of, and course. Yeah, of course. And, and, and you know, he's taught at Apple University. He, he There was a big lecture given to all the Apple executives um, about Glenn Gould. Um, Steve Jobs was a huge fan. And this idea that this relentless pursuit of perfection can actually create something completely extraordinary. So I'm looking at technology and I'm looking at this, I'm still very much in two minds about it, the whole Asperger's kind of retroactive diagnosis. Mm-hmm. You know, did he have Asperger's? Does it matter? Mm-hmm. Do we need to label everything just because we can't really necessarily understand it? Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, I really I want to look at you know his playing as well. It's so important, and his relationship with Canada. The more I talk to you, the less you're playing music. So let's let's play music. Sure. So what control you, boy? Well, right. well no. I'm, <laughs> I, I, here I am. To, I'm just thinking that here I am talking to you, and all I want to do is hear the piano. You're so sweet. What, do you play, by the way? I play a little bit. But okay. I, I played a little bit when I was younger. But I, I the greatest gift that this job gives me is sometimes when, when, when it's a hard day and I had like a lot of interviews and some of them have been challenging. Mm. Um, uh, sometimes when the show's over, I'll, I'll come over here and, and play waltzes and I'll play klezmer music and I'll play all kinds of different oh, music on this. Yeah, the and best I'm, job in the world. And I'm not good enough to play it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I get to, which is I get to play no- November Rain by Guns N' Roses on it. Nice. You know, it doesn't make any sense. No, you're, so what are you going to play? Your beard's quite Axl Rose, isn't it? Well, I, I'm working on it, you know, yeah. I'm, 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 it's not Glenn Give Gould. It a few months. Axl Rose um, maybe, yeah. What am I going to play? You know what? It, it would be crazy not to play Bach, mm-hmm. I think, considering Gould and, and this piano. And when I was many years ago, about 10 years ago, I was in a locked ward and I wasn't allowed anything. It was a psychiatric ward and a friend smuggled in an iPad, um, an iPod. It was, you know, they just launched the iPod mini. Do you remember? It looked yeah, like an after for... eight minute. It was this tiny little thing. Yeah. And you could sneak it in. He, he snuck it in inside like a shampoo bottle or whatever. And I remember going under the covers and he'd filled it up with... Gould and Bach, and I thought I'd known everything that, that Gould had ever recorded. Um, but I heard this piece, that, and I hadn't heard it before. And in that moment, it was one of those kind of Elvis moments, you know, which you'll never forget. Like, it's the first time you have sex, or the first time you have a kid, or it was that, I just, I heard this piece of music, and I thought, something this profoundly beautiful, the fact that that exists in the world means that it's not necessarily a completely hostile place. Mm-hmm. And it did for me what no amount of medication or therapy has ever been able to do. It just it made things feel slightly more solid. So I figured I'd play that. What's it um, called? It's the Bach Marcello Adagio. So Marcello, um, he wrote this oboe concerto. Gould heard it, fell in love with it so much. Um, and Bach also fell in love with it. Bach transcribed it for the piano, um, for the keyboard, and, and Gould recorded the whole thing. And it starts out like a heartbeat. And and then we get this incredible melody. It's just it's very 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 beautiful. It's like a it's like the ultimate love song for me. Well, this is this is James. I'm going to step out of the way. I'm going to give you some space here. Thank you. That's uh, very kind of you. This is this is. Well, yeah, I'm I'm not going to stand here and stare at you. Going to leave. Get I out. am. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to I'm going to get a cab. <laughs> Run. <laughs> this is James Rhodes playing Glenn Gould's uh, rehearsal piano in our Q studio, which is which is just the coolest. I'm going to move over here. Thank you. 
I mean, just just perfect. It's a cool piece, huh? It's a beautiful piece of yeah. music. And you were right about the heartbeat at the top. It's a total heartbeat. Yeah. And then it splits from one note to two notes to four notes, and then we get the melody. And Marcello was this amazing Italian composer, and Bach heard it and obviously thought, God, I'm properly shit at the oboe. Let's let's put it on the keyboard <laughs> instead. It'll be a little bit yeah. easier. And yeah. um, thank God, right? So how do you feel now? Um, I love the piano. Mm-hmm. I kind of try to see if I can fit it on the plane <laughs> to take it back with me. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing to be here in in Toronto at the piano that Gould would rehearse on. And of course, it always begs the question: what What would he think when he's rehearsing, when he's warming up mm-hmm. before a concert or before a recording? Would he be nervous? Was he so assured of his own genius that he didn't get nerves? Mm-hmm. Was it? Um, I just. I wish we could know more of him. The thing that keeps coming up in the interviews is that he's quite. It was hard to get to know, mm-hmm. and I just I, I'd love to find a way in because of course when you listen to him play you feel like you know him, but you see that through your own filters. So I suppose I, I wish I I knew what was going on in his mind. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, we can see the piano as a as a as a construction of of ingredients. You know, you have yeah. strings and you have hammers and you have keys and you have a, yeah a lot a, of wood and and a, and a, and a, and a have lot. You got of, wood. We have a, well, yeah, we have a <laughs> tremendous amount of wood in Canada. When you were playing the piece, did it did it feel any different? Than playing it on another piano to playing it somewhere else. Of course, it feels different uh, because it has that added weight of knowing who else has played this thing. Yeah. It's weird. It's like going into Abbey Road in London and playing John Lennon's piano. Mm-hmm. I mean, anyway, I don't care how uh, how used you are to pl- to playing instruments, you're going to feel some kind of weird kind of shudder going through time coming up at you from the keys, and um, it's something. I mean, even just going, you know. Like blasphemy to play that on his piano. <laughs> Actually, I should point oh out that's, that, I mean, that's 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 the 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 uh, air from the, the the Goldberg variations. And yes. what yeah, what when you were playing that just then, what freaked me out was going. Well, yeah, he probably played that. Exactly, that's the <laughs> point. He probably played that he on that. Did it. Yeah. He, that's not the first time that because God knows I haven't played it. So it's yeah. not it's not the f- it's not the first time that piece has been performed. Let's do on a kind piano. of just so I kind of raise it get it up because I sure as hell you wouldn't have played that um, well as, as soon as you're done I'll come in here and play Guns N' Roses and, boy, and right? I'll just I'll just destroy all the myth of the piano done once James Rhodes thanks for coming in it's been such a pleasure really every time I'm in Toronto I'm going to come look you up you know we'll get you a cot that would be great not even a bed no wow we're going to put it underneath the piano you guys are like, oh that's where I belong yeah. really, it's my safe place <laughs> under, the, under the piano where no one can hurt me you kind of I bet he did that you think so? Oh, fetal position under the piano. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Just uh, <laughs> nice I have friends who slept with guitars and slept with violins. Yeah. Just to try and feel. I don't know. I've never understood, but they always guess they wanted to feel closer to it. They wanted yeah. to feel like it was part of their lives. That's a little weird. I haven't done that. Yeah. Well, it's wow. hard to do with the piano. <laughs> it's a little yeah. bit painful. We <laughs> <Yeah. I laughs> could probably put a bed on the inside of it. <laughs> I would totally sleep under this piano. Well, anytime. Anytime you're in Toronto, come in and play it. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs>